team organizing member who are really a backbone uh, to organize such kind of webinar or any kind of fdp workshop because uh, through my personal experience i know a lot of work background work we have to do a lot of uh, uh, parallel things we have to handle so really it is very appreciable to the team of truba professor chandan sir uh, 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 sonal madam and other members tagi sir also that are really working behind to make it successful and and also i would like to appreciate rgpv especially tech cube department chobe sir uh, who are really uh, very generous to allow to organize affiliated institute to such kind of fdp and they also provide sufficient fund so that they can run uh, such kind of uh, programs that people can uh, learn from them a lot of things okay so uh, good afternoon good afternoon sir sonal i am audible yes sir completely audible okay okay something happened from my side there's i a little bit confused okay so uh, good afternoon everybody uh, myself dr vivek tiwari from triple it near raipur computer science and engineering department i welcome you all participants again in this two days webinar on that is related to the data science and r so uh, today topic i have taken that is uh, related to descriptive data analytics Uh, using uh, a k-means clustering algorithm, and I will also implement all those things by using R. So first, let me explain what the things I I am going to cover uh, throughout this session. Basically, three points. I will put more focus over there. First, I will start discussing about the k-means clustering that comes under the descriptive clustering, descriptive data analytics. i will also explain k means clustering through all possible example numerical example all the distance functions i will take in consideration i will explain its working through the numerical example and the last i will try to demonstrate how you can use uh, k means clustering for a descriptive analytics for that purpose i will use a, a platform r to the same purpose if you are comfortable in the python matlab or any other language you can choose as per your comfortable because internal working and concept are similar and it is a matter of only syntax for a today discussion i will take a, a platform r for the demonstration so without wasting a time i am going to directly start with the uh, today topic clustering okay so this uh, uh, ms word file is visible to everybody Okay, I can also. Yes, sir. It's yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, 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 the the first line, uh, the first line you can consider over here that comes under the clustering. You can say what is the clustering? Clustering is an unsupervised descriptive data analytics. there is a two word i have highlighted uh, with a different different color the two word is the unsupervised and descriptive means clustering is a unsupervised and descriptive data analytics first i will ex explain what is a descriptive analytics because there are, uh, you can consider a lot of sub branches under the data analytics so a uh, uh, majority of the people talk about there are three sub branches under the data analytics descriptive data analytics predictive data analytics and prescriptive data analytics with the limited time i am not touching other branches of the data analytics i will talk about little bit about the descriptive data analytics as the name suggested descriptive data analytics is something that we normally use to describe our data once we have a data a lot of data may be related to any any application you can imagine maybe may many application you can imagine maybe video applications image application text data numerical data continuous data what kind of data you have so you want to describe your data okay then somebody may ask what is the meaning of describing the data describing means suppose you are running a business and then in the business something happened maybe maybe suddenly you are you are uh, feeling a lot of uh, lot of benefit and you may uh, start losing uh, in your business so you want to know something happened what is the cause 
what is the reason behind that happening so in that case you want to know the answer of particular question answer of particular questions with respect to the data then you require a descriptive data analysis or you want to search some pattern some artifact some trend that is hidden inside the data if i put a lot of huge amount of data before you by looking the data you can understand you cannot understand anything so you require some tool that will scan your data multiple time and after scanning it will give some result these are the hidden pattern artifact and some uh, uh, trends are uh, 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 they can they can get from the data so you can take further another decision so you know something what is hidden inside the data all such kind of processing comes under the descriptive data one nice thing i want to share with you all data visualization whatever the data you have you might have you all all of you have gone through such kind of a process statistical uh, you want to see the statistical property of the data means what is the average uh, average age of a student or the pani bhi student what is the average package of uh, rgbv affiliated institute what is the average salary what is the mean mean salary and and what is the interval as a lot of statistical term i can i can list over here so if you want to know the all the statistical term comes under the descriptive data analysis if you want to visualize your data maybe by using bar chart maybe i maybe by using heat chart heat map a lot of visualization tools are available visualization calculations are available so once you go for a visualization it also comes under the descriptive data analytics because by using a single bar chart or pie chart you are describing your data okay that are very simple about the descriptive data analytics and and uh, there are some lot uh, as a list of example list of algorithm that comes under the descriptive analytics are that are like that clustering clustering is the one of the example are the descriptive analytics another example is association rule mining many of you i hope know the association rule mining like a prior view algorithm or a frequent pattern group algorithms comes under the descriptive data analytics uh one 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 more of uh, feature extraction algorithms or i'm i'm uh, able to recall that is called pca i think many of you also listen at least listen that word principal component analysis also comes under the descriptive analytics so uh, the clustering is a descriptive data analytics plus it is unsupervised learning i also hope that many of you know there is a two sub branches of the machine learning algorithm supervised learning and unsupervised learning supervised learning uh, if you if you see the data the answer is given to you answer in the form of the class label there is a one feature will be there normally the right hand right hand side column the answer is given to you so what you need to do based on the input feature you have to map your data input feature to the output feature because the answer is given to you so you can recheck every time the way you are mapping the data with the input feature to the output feature whether that mapping is correct or not because you have the answer to check whatever you are doing and whatever the, the results you are getting that is met exactly match, matching with the real answer or not so here what is the real answer are given to you in the in the term of class label they are used to supervise your process they they may correct your process that's that's why all the algorithms that comes under that category is called supervised learning means all the classification algorithms uh, nape an and decision tree random forest uh, logistic regression uh, linear regression all comes under the supervised learning in the unsupervised learning there is a there is a no answer given to you you have to continuous apply some process whatever the answer you are getting you cannot recheck it whether the the, the output of finding you are presenting over here that is a correct or not so no supervisor over there that's why it is called unsupervised so at least with this uh, set of discussion we can easily talk about the clustering is something that comes under the unsupervised learning and descriptive data analytics i think that is enough for the introduction about background background of the uh, clustering now uh, you uh, try to see the uh, ppt or the screen the definition is given to you that so 
so i i never recommend uh, recommend to memorize any definition a lot of kind of definition may be available may you get from the google and there is no any single qualified algorithm that somebody will claim that is a perfect algorithm so there is no perfect algorithm so 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 keeping the content very simple i have i have uh, uh, included very simple clustering uh, definition here i am going to read it out so clustering is a task of dividing the population or the data point in normal language we we normally talk about the data but in technically data is not a correct word technical word is the sample or population either you can use the sample word or population that represent the data whatever the data you have there is a huge difference between the word population and sample i am not going in that level now so correct word is a population population means the data you are talking about. so clustering is the task of dividing the population or for the simplicity you can say the data points into a number of group these number of group normally we call the mix so what is the clustering process whatever the data set is given to you you have to apply some process that is called clustering plus we will do something for you and divide your data into different different group or different different such that uh vivek sir uh, sorry for interruption uh, actually the contents uh, slide is visible to us right now there is a heading contents that slide is visible to us oh that's why i asked so, okay so uh, actually uh, there is a dot doc file let me do it again okay sir that's happen in the online no, no, no. stop sharing let me do mm. now it is better yes sir our word file is shared right now okay, we are sorry, able sorry, to sorry see for that file. i was discussing that point for the many last 10 minutes that is the definition but we understood so, sir okay, not i so not i so so that is the line i was explaining in the last 10 minutes uh, clustering is a it's unsupervised descriptive data analytics and i have explained in detail what is the meaning of descriptive word over here what is the meaning of unsupervised word so that thing i was explaining not i so uh, i was reading that uh, i was reading that line over there the clustering is the task uh, of dividing the population or data points into a number of sub group that is normally we call the cluster such that such that the data points in the same group or same cluster are more similar to each other than the data points that belong to the another group what is the meaning of that whatever the data set is given to you you apply the clustering process clustering process will divide your data into number of sub group the number of sub group that is called cluster now we have to check the property of the cluster the property of cluster should be like that all the data points that belong to the same cluster should be similar to each other and they are should be much dissimilar to the data points that belong to the another cluster so uh, what is the meaning of similarity over here i will explain in detail uh, further uh, down the line discussion so what is the meaning of similarity when i say the data points are similar to each other what is the meaning of that how can i quantify the similarity how to, how do i know uh, uh, these they, they, if there is two algorithms and uh, both the algorithms uh, are comes under the clustering and applied in the same data how two algorithm are performing which is better than other one so there there must be a mathematical formula that will quantify the similarity among the data points like that so i will discuss in detail what is the meaning of similarity over here so for for this moment you can understand applying the clustering process the result will be a, a, a set of data points a data set of group such that data points uh, that belong to the uh, same group should be similar and it must be must be more dissimilar to data points that are uh, that belong to the another group like that okay so i'll uh, uh, go to the uh, little bit more detailed discussion over there there is a two uh, uh, bullet point a uh, one bullet point saying about that cluster now i'm talking about the single group after the clustering there may be a 100 cluster maybe 20 cluster maybe 5 cluster 
each cluster should be like that i am going to discuss about that the cluster means a single group is a cluster is a group of object that belong to the same category or share the similar property again that criteria uh, uh, i encountered again. earlier also we have seen in the definitions the cluster is something a group of data items where the data items share the same uh, uh, property or uh, uh, they are similar to each other i will i will also discuss in detail next point very important normally people forget to uh, discuss this kind of uh, important point while doing the cluster analysis we first partition the set of data into the group agree based on the similarity and then assign the label to the group that is a very important point you try to understand uh, that uh, somebody will ask a question between difference yeah, between no. two clustering hey, and the no. clustering so normally what if we talk about the clustering is unsupervised learning and the classification is a supervised learning very correct answer but more better if you explain that clustering generate new information new knowledge supervised learning classification never never generate the new knowledge the clustering generate the new knowledge how i will explain it with the example suppose this data set is given to you that data set is belong to the some vendor so you can consider like a dmart or you can consider like a big bazaar so suppose i am the owner of the big bazaar here over here and that is the customer all the customers data of last 5 year or 10 year data you can consider so whatever the data i have i have applied a clustering uh, algorithm suppose a clustering method i have applied and assume that the clustering process divided our data into the two sub group so clustering process may divide your data into multiple uh, uh, maybe maybe number of uh, cluster maybe 2 3 5 10 20 100 200 100. so there is no single rule but the, for the simplicity i am i am assuming that whatever the clustering algorithm you have applied on data uh, 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 the, uh, the clustering process have divided your data into the two sub group or two cluster one is the red color cluster one is the blue color cluster agree so the clustering uh, is not a magical process it only divide your data once you have a cluster you have to analyze your cluster with your own knowledge and try to see the what kind of property of a red color cluster uh, contain what are the other property blue color cluster can have so assume that we have a two cluster red color cluster and the blue color cluster and when you analyze uh, the data items or customers that belong to the uh, red color cluster you came to know all the customer who are in that red color cluster normally purchase the electronic item so that the property you get it know after the clustering process over then each and every cluster you have to go into the detail and then you realize that the customer who belongs to the red color cluster are electronic item lover so normally whenever they visit our 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 a shop they normally purchase the electronic item similarly after the deeper analysis you get it know that the blue color uh, cluster all the customer belong to over there they normally visit our shop for the grocery item or daily use item they normally purchase so that is the new label we are talking about in the point two we are talking about we can we can label the groups label the group means we can give the name new name of that uh, uh, customers that belong to the particular group like here all the customer who belongs to the red color uh, uh, cluster normally we can give the new i new name to them electronics item lover similarly other group of customer we can give the new name grocery item lover <coughs> so what is the advantage over there advantage over there yeah. the letter suppose the new uh, electronics items uh, uh, that uh, vendor uh, uh, want to launch so they have a new tv a new music music system they have so they they, they want to have advertise uh, their newly uh, product so it is not good to send a message Uh, to call or to send an email to all the customer they have they only send this kind of information that new music system or new electronics product they have now they will try to contact only 
those customers who belong to the red color cluster because they are normally purchased the electronic item. So what is the benefit of that? Benefit of that is that they are, uh, the, the vendor don't need to invest a lot of money to contact to each and every customer over there. It is targeting only a small number of customers so that there is a, there is a, a more chance to, 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 to gain the uh, uh, benefit of them because they are normally all those person they love uh, they love the electronic item so this is called target uh, uh, advertisement target advertising normally so they have to target so these are the product with that product these are the set of people that are normally love that product so how do you know these are the set of people you know only by using the clustering so that is the example i have explained over there how the clustering work with respect to our our, our business or how uh, clustering can help uh, any manager or any owner of the company to take a appropriate decision. Now I will go a little bit in detail about that. So the main advantage of the clustering over the classification is that it help find out useful feature that distinguish different group. Like in that example, we had a two group, red color and blue color. So, the, so the clustering uh, uh, help us to get it know how these uh, persons are different to the person belong to the uh, different group. So that is called useful feature. So if I say uh, uh, the, this uh, red color customers are electronics item lover means the, fe the, the new feature I have generated. So that the things I really wanted to make it clear, clustering is something that generate the new feature, generate the new knowledge, where classification cannot do so. Okay, go to the next one, uh, sim similar example. Suppose this is the data set is given to you over there, left hand side the original data set. You applied the clustering process. Once the clustering process is over, the clustering process had divided the given data set into the three subgroups where you can see the uh, these are the data items uh, that are represented by the green color means that is a green color cluster that is a blue color cluster that is a red color cluster so why i have used that uh, figure to explain something because normally people also think about that clustering clustering really physically divide the data not at all a lot of uh, misconception uh, I have seen with the new, new learner of the data science. They think clustering process physically divide the data, not at all. You see the data distribution of the original data, and the right side is the output of the clustering. The data distribution is intact. I am not physically moving any data. Means the core, the 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 relative distance between data points are similar exactly same as with it was in the original data we have given only new label means these data items are the green color cluster it belong to the blue color cluster it belong to the red color cluster so that the things i wanted to convey in the clustering we never physically divide the data we only give the new name of each and every observation now Technically, I'm going to discuss any machine learning algorithm, whatever the algorithm you know, or whatever the algorithm you will study in the future, always comes with the objective function. So uh, there is no any machine learning algorithm that you can uh, you can implement uh, without any objective function. So what is the meaning of objective function? So you um, try to again see the example. Suppose that is the input data, or that is the output data. So in between something happened. The clustering process works in between over there. So whenever the process uh, uh, will take place over here, how a uh, system get it know I'm going in correct di correct direction or wrong direction? Because that is uh, that is something we have to uh, uh, define some mathematical function or, or something that continuous guide your process whether you are in correct direction or, or you are in the wrong direction. So in the clustering, there's a two objective functions. Uh, uh, there, is, there is no rule such like that, a universal objective function that you can employ with each and every machine learning algorithm, not like that. 
every machine learning algorithm is unique it has its own objective function there may be single objective function there may be multiple objective if you try to recall you know about the linear regression in the linear regression least square method or sse -E, sum of squared error is the objective function. you want to minimize it similarly in the clustering uh, there is a two kind of uh, objective function what what kind of clustering uh, you can consider i'm not i'm not discussing the k means clustering here i am discussing the background i am just developing the background right now so there is a two kind of objective function first objective function is that point with within each cluster are similar to each other that is called intra cluster distance are minimized that is called homogeneity it is talking about a single cluster whatever the cluster you have all the data items that belong to the same cluster should be close to each other that is called intra cluster distance should be minimized another word it is called homogeneity another objective function is that that points that belong to the different clusters should be dissimilar so that is called inter cluster distance should be maximized that is called heterogeneity so homogeneity heterogeneity are two property so once your crossing uh, process take place we have to we have to check every time these two objective function homogeneity and heterogeneity if i am increasing the homogeneity on heterogeneity then my direction is uh, 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 correct i am going in the correct direction if my homogeneity or heterogeneity is not increasing uh, i have to relook whatever i have done so that is only a, a guiding parameter that will help you to run your clustering process and these two objective functions are associated with any any kind of uh, clustering algorithm we have through a diagram i can explain over there suppose if the full data set is given to you after the clustering process we have a three cluster one cluster second cluster and third cluster and data points that are within the cluster i am saying this should be a density uh, this should be uh, uh, so dense this should be uh, very close to each other so the distance between any data points the distance between any any data point uh, uh, within a same cluster try to minimize it okay so uh, i was talking about uh, that is a cluster and the within the cluster these are the data points the distance between these data point we should we should minimize it that is called homogeneity and we have considered there is a t3 type of cluster now when we talk about the heterogeneity we assume we consider one cluster as a single entity so we have consider as a three single entity we have a three cluster now if you calculate the distance between two data points that belongs to the two different different cluster should be as far as possible should be as maximum as possible that is called heterogeneity so i don't have time otherwise with conceptually i will try to explain why it is required somebody may ask the question so what is the benefit of that why we need it so why i want to maximize that distance what are the, what are the benefit of maximizing that distance so whenever next time we will have a time we will go into the detailed discussion conceptually what is the benefit of those things for this moment it is enough i am not uh, going to discuss much detail about the application of the clustering so uh, i i try i am trying to focus uh, to deliver much technical or mathematical part of the clustering so clustering are normally algorithm you can imagine in everywhere in every area it's 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 shown its applicability so i am not going to have a detailed discussion about the application of the clustering i will uh, jump into the more important discussion clustering is a umbrella or clustering is a branch under that clustering uh, so many categories are there like uh, in the in the screen you can see there is a three uh, sub category under the clustering partitioning based clustering hierarchical based clustering density based clustering there are another method also there there are another method also there like a rule based clustering 
and I try to recall a grid based clustering. So there are many subcategory under the clustering. So most famous subcategory of the clustering method I have uh, listed over here. One thing more, these are the subcategory. These are the these are not algorithms, uh, single algorithm. I mean to say the partitioning based uh, subcategory of the clustering under the partitioning based subcategory, there are many algorithm. One of them is the K-means clustering algorithm. There are maybe so many algorithm that comes under the partitioning based. Similarly, there are so many algorithms, clustering algorithm that comes under the hierarchical method. One of them is the agglomerative clustering. Similarly, there are a lot of uh, density based method. One of them is the DB scan. So these are the some example I have over there. And with the limited time today, I will discuss only the K-means clustering. That comes under the partitioning method. What is the meaning of partitioning method? Suppose we are given a data a database of N object, means we have N population, N number of population or N number of data, data number of rows or number of data points. And the partitioning method construct T partition of the data, K number of partition of the data, sorry. So if N number of data items are given to you, partitioning method will try to part, uh, try to, uh, try to uh, make a partition uh, of a given N data points into the K number of cluster. That is the value of K. Where the K should be less than N. It is very obvious. Because if suppose uh, uh, I give a uh, hundred observations, so how many maximum number of the cluster you can create? 100 cluster. You cannot create a, a 101 cluster with respect to the 100 data points. So similarly, case should be always be less than is equal to the data points are given to you. Again, I'm not going to have a much detailed discussion because there's a two kind of clustering, soft clustering and hard clustering. It is the rule where K can K, K must number of cluster must be less than number of data points. It is the rule that is valid for the hard clustering. If you go with the soft clustering, the number of cluster may be larger than, may be bigger than the number of data points. Means if you have a five data point, you may create a 10 cluster. If you are applying the soft clustering, but I'm not again discussing much detail what is the soft clustering and hard clustering. Four, I'm declaring over here, whatever the things I'm going to discuss over there, that, that is with respect to the hard clustering. Okay. So here, it means that it will classify the data into the K group, means K cluster, which satisfy the following requirement. Now I'm going to have a little more detailed discussion about the clustering process. So whatever the data point, N number of data point is given to you, the clustering process will party uh, will will have uh, will do the partition uh, of the given data points into the k number of partitions such that each group contain at least one object means it is not possible in the clustering process of empty cluster the cluster must have at least one single object at least there is not any possibility for an empty cluster second each ob object must belong to the exactly one group. Means the sharing is not possible in the hard clustering. Means it is not possible to cluster share a single data point, a same data point. Or in other word, if I say uh, a, a single data point cannot be become a member of two cluster. So that is the two conditions over there that we have to follow. Like each cluster at least contain one object or each object must belong to exactly one group. These two conditions comes under the hard clustering. Okay, that I was discussing about partitioning method. Under the partitioning method, I will go uh, uh, for a further uh, discussion about the K-means clustering. So now it is it is the things till time I have discussed about the fundamental of the clustering process their objective functions and then uh, uh, and and further we have discussed about the partitioning method 
under the class partitioning method, I'm going to discuss about the k-means clustering. So the k-means clustering is so famous and perhaps, to, uh, perhaps most widely, most commonly used by the academician, by the researchers and many applications. People have used the k-means clustering, people have studied k-means clustering, people, people have uh, worked on uh, uh, k-means clustering during their MTech, during their PhD. So output of that, uh, that huge amount of studies that a lot of versions are available of the k-means clustering algorithm. So I will, I will discuss here the first version that is you can consider the first time introduced by its inventor. So the very simple k-means clustering algorithm I will discuss over there. And if you want to go further in detail, you may explore its different, different versions. All the versions are you can find in the Google. Okay, so uh, key points about the k-means clustering, I will start from over there. So the k-means algorithm assign each of the n example to the one of the k cluster. That is a very simple point that is also a condition of the partitioning method means once you apply the k-means clustering algorithm on the uh, on the data whatever the data you have suppose n number of object observations you have after the clustering process over each and every data points must belong to any of the cluster another word i can say it is not possible at all some of the data points are not member of any cluster you cannot say like that. It is not possible. If there is a k number of cluster, if there is n number of data points, after the clustering process, all the data points must be a member of any of the cluster. Okay, so there will not have any chance for any data items are not a member of any cluster. It is not possible. That that is that is written in the first bullet point. Second bullet point about the k-means clustering is that. We are continuous talking about the K. So you can say uh, that is the again uh, limitation of the K means clustering over there. Whenever you start the process, user has to define the value of K. K means total number of cluster. So now the quality of output is uh, rely on the ability of the user. How can you say, suppose I'm the, uh, 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 Dr. Vivek is a one, 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 one user or one developer and uh, Dr. Ram is a second developer. Same algorithm is given to me, same data set is given to me. I have uh, applied the k-means clustering process. I have applied the k-means clustering process uh, by using k is equal to two. And my friend uh, may also apply the uh, clustering process by is equal to k is equal to five means two persons are made uh, they are independent to decide the initial value of the k i may start my process with the k is equal to two my friend may start with the k is equal to five so now the big question over there what is the ideal value of the k what is the suitable value of the k so if the user is able to decide or have such much such 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 kind of knowledge where ideal value the user can predict algorithm will give the correct answer otherwise the answer will or, or the results will not be will not going to satisfy your application so the second point is talking about uh, also talk about the same thing where the suitable k is the number that has been determined ahead of the time but must be given in advance at the beginning Meaning of that, when you start the clustering process, the you, you have k is a parameter. You have to decide the value of the k. That may be not ideal value. Maybe that is a totally wrong value. But there is another method. Once the clustering process over, I will also discuss in today's lecture what are those methods that will help you to get it know that is a value of or that is the optimal value of the k. So it is written over there. The k is the value that has been determined ahead of the time, means later we can decide the ideal value of the k. But at the beginning, you have to provide it to the system. Third point is already I have discussed, the goal is to minimize the differences within the each cluster 
and maximize the differences between the cluster. It is talking about the homogeneity and heterogeneity. It's talking about the intra-cluster distance, intra-cluster distance. Minimizing the difference within the cluster means intra-cluster distance. They are talking about the homogeneity. Maximizing the differences between the cluster. It is talking about the heterogeneity. So these are the two objective functions that I have already explained in earlier discussion. So these are the some key points that you should know uh, before going uh, before dive into the much detailed discussion about the chemical clustering. Now I'm going to discuss about the procedure. Procedure means algorithm, typical algorithm. I'm going to discuss over here. So so uh, there is a k-means clustering is the recursive process. K-means clustering is the recursive process. Recursive process means that they are required one set of uh, steps or uh, uh, statement that you have to execute multiple times. So there is a two phases. You can you can uh, you can see over there the two phases and the and under the k-means clustering are over there. Updation and assignment. So what is the recursive process means? You can you you can think like that. Updation, assignment, then updation, then again assignment, then updation, then assignment, then updation, and then assignment. This process will continue go until some uh, some stopping criteria met. So what is the stopping criteria? I will also discuss. First, try to imagine that there is a recursive process. In the recursive process, there are two kind of phases: updation and assignment. These are the phases that continuous we have to execute until some stopping criteria. Okay. So one by one we will discuss. The first step of the clustering process is that it assigns the examples to an initial set of k cluster means whatever the data points are given to you it assigned randomly you try to try to see the word randomly it randomly assigned the data point to the cluster okay that is called assignment the first phase is the assignment assignment means whatever the data point you have whatever the data point you have you are making uh, you are sending that data point randomly to one of the clusters so you are assigning that data point to particular cluster that is called assignment uh, phase then what happened then update the second phase is it update the assignment by adjusting the cluster bound so once you randomly assign the data point to the cluster then you have to check something i will discuss you have to check something so based on that checking you came to know oh the data point x should not be a part of cluster data point X should be a part of cluster Y. So whatever the random assignment you have done, then you came to know some against 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 couple of data points that assignments were wrong. Then you have to change the assignment. That is called updation. So that is written over there. It updates the assignment by adjusting the cluster bounding. Cluster bounding adjusting means only simple word. The data point that were the part of cluster X. Now I will remove that. I will make the data point X a cluster of another data point, particular data point is a cluster of Y. So that is called assignment or updation. So that is written over there in the third bullet point. The process of updating an assignment occurs several times until changes no longer improve the cluster. Means that is an iterative process. It will continue go until some stopping criteria match. Some of the stopping criteria are also written over there. It will continue go until the changes no longer improve the cluster fit. So what is meaning of cluster fit? Cluster fit means same thing, that is homogeneity and heterogeneity. Through those two objective functions we have covered. So whenever you updating the cluster, and the result of that updation is that you are going close to the objective functions means that the changes you have made is a correct a correct changes so you continue go on there may be some time happen the changes you are making updation you are making between the cluster but that changes does not improve the homogeneity or heterogeneity means that whatever the changes you are making that is a useless you should stop it so these are the that is called that is called cluster fit. Cluster fit means objective functions are given. 
simple at this point the process is stopped and cluster are finalized so uh, for the simplicity uh, i have also uh, created one flow chart for making it very simple understanding so again i'm going to uh, uh, rediscuss the clustering process at the start we have to define the number of k k may be 2 may be 5 may be 6 randomly you have to create the k number of cluster and also you have to calculate the centroid of each and every cluster now i have to calculate the distance of every data point to the every centroid and based on that difference that distance i get it know some of the data points are wrongly placed because when with respect to the data point x i calculate the distance of x to all the centroid and the data points that are close to the which centroid should be a part of that cluster so based on that distance the data point that are closer to the uh, which centroid should be a part of that cluster we can make a Uh, updation so here we again again make the grouping based on the minimum distance yes some stopping criteria if stopping criteria match algorithm over otherwise again it will go with the same process because that is called because that is a recursive process i will explain all those things through the numerical example so if somebody have missed something or not able to understand properly not satisfied wait for 10 minutes i will explain in detail so before going into the mathematical example uh, uh, let me discuss uh, the stopping criteria uh, in detail basically there are three kind of stopping criteria first one is the changes changes means data points movement between the cluster if the data points are moving between the cluster but it does not improve the cluster fit it does not improving the homogeneity and heterogeneity at this time we should stop our algorithm recursive process we should stop it because continuous moving the data points along the cluster but my objective functions are not getting improved i should stop it second data point is that it may happen data movement is stopped after some recursive process uh, you may uh, assume that the cluster are converged there is no possible movement uh, uh, of the data points among the cluster means no movement means automatically so will stop the clustering process third data point third clustering uh, stopping criteria is that set in advance number of iterations it may happen sometime the the Uh, the clustering process continue continue that iterate, uh, iteration continue go so you can it, it is not possible uh, you can wait for a uh, hours or two hours or 10 days or 20 days it is it's kind of endless loop so it is also highly recommended to set in advance like a number of iterations for my clustering process maximum number of iteration is 100 before 100 iteration if condition 1 and condition 2 match then okay that is called my cluster are converged otherwise after 100 iteration my algorithm automatically stop and what are the cluster at that point they have that will consider as a cluster so these three are the stopping criteria one minute okay one uh, request i want to make over here if somebody having any question issue they can write on the chat box i have opened the chat box so whatever i am explaining you want to ask the some question you can write on the chat chat box i will try to catch uh, i will try to catch all the questions you are typing over here so that thing you can use for your understanding okay so now uh, yeah a little bit discussion about the distance matrix look we talking about a lot we have to calculate the distance between two data points we have to calculate the centroid of the cluster and the data point that are close to the centroid should be a a, a, a part of that cluster so means ultimately we talking about the distance matrix we have to calculate the distance between two data points 
so so many distance matrix are available for you you may create your own distance matrix only you need to calculate the distance between two data points so euclidean distance is a one of the famous distance matrix are over there so you can use that distance matrix to calculate the distance of between two data points so the formula is written over there for the calculating the distance between two data points by using euclidean distance matrix under the two dimensions if there is a three dimensional space you can extend over there through the example i have also uh, written over there uh, the distance between the, these two data points you can fit into the formula whatever the value you are getting that is called the distance euclidean distance between data points if you are not happy with the uh, euclidean distance or again a lot of discussion may may be possible uh, what kind of uh, uh, distance matrix you should use because a lot of options are available a lot of options options are available like manhattan distance you can use if you, if you are not happy with the equilibrium distance minoxi distance you can use spearman correlation you can use or you can define your own distance matrix so again a lot of discussion over there based on the application based on the characteristics of the data you can use the appropriate distance matrix the same k means clustering same data points if you change the uh, uh, distance matrix you will get a different different clustering result so the clustering results whatever the final cluster you are getting it is really highly influenced by the underlying distance matrix you are using so be careful do not casually apply any distance matrix a lot of reasoning required suppose you are doing mtech or phd suppose and and at time of viva somebody may ask the questions uh, uh, the distance matrix you have used this one why not other why you have chosen only euclidean distance why and why other distance matrix you didn't try what was the benefit of the euclidean distance in that way you supposed to know the answer so that is the question i have uh, uh, thrown on you uh, you may have a further uh, you can explore you can discuss with your teacher with your books and with your any colleague uh, what kind of distance matrix are available and what are the benefit of each and every distance question is there where we can learn in more deeply as far as the machine learning is concerned there is no any single book no any single website the way i have learned i can explain my experience with you that only the google so many courses are over there coursera courses or uh, or uh, 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 mit courses so many courses are there so many videos are there you can search how to decide the distance matrix a lot of video will you will get it and you have to go through each and every video each and every website so you have to try a lot you have to read from many resources then later you get it know these are the way these are the distance matrix in the benefit of each and every distance matrix limitations of each and every distance matrix and which distance matrix what work well with which uh, kind of uh, a data set so there is no any single answer this is the book or this is the website you can study no you have to explore it that is the answer now uh, as i promised Uh, i will also explain k means clustering by using the numerical example it will really help you a lot to understanding a concept because when you do study theoretical theoretically a lot of things are not clear so i have taken a simple data set only having a four observations means four number of rows against two features so the data set you can consider that is some medicine a b c d r medicine and the weight of medicine is a uh, tablet is this x x uh, weight and ph value also captured in the data set so this is the data set having only four data points with respect to the two dimensional data first i will try to visualize it through the scatter the plot i have uh, visualized into two dimensional space so these are the four data points now before dive into the detail if i ask right now you need to create a two cluster so what will be the cluster so anybody will can anybody will uh, is easily indicate that 
these two upper side data items should be a part of one cluster and these lower two data items should be a part of another so through your reasoning through your understanding you you get it now if two cluster are given there these two cluster are should be like that you can think like that now i am going to demonstrate whether the clustering algorithm also will give the same results or it will differ from your expectation so okay i am starting over here that like we have to decide the value of k so the value of k is 2 you assume that the value of k is 2 you can start the value of k is equal to 5 10 3 2 whatever you want based on the number of data so for understanding uh, for making making it very simple discussion i am deciding the k is equal to 2 so now try to recall the uh, 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 the procedure or the flow chart of the kms cluster first i have to randomly select the data point so suppose i have selected these two data point as a two cluster this is the cluster 1 k is equal to 1 and this is the cluster 2 try to understand what i am saying k is equal to 2 is given to you so randomly you have to select a two data point as a starting point as a seed point sometimes it is called seed point Yeah, some someone have written uh, uh, k means initializing the number of cluster. Yeah, I say yes. K is the initial. K means uh, I am explaining exact same answer over there. Whatever the k is given to you, or you want to decide means that number of point randomly you have to select as a beginning, as a beginner, as an initial seed, as an initialization. So in this example, the k is equal to two. randomly i have to select any two data point as a seed point c data point so suppose this is the case equal to 1 suppose this is the case equal to 2 agree now try to recall that flow chart i have to calculate the centroid of the each cluster so at the beginning that is the cluster 1 that is the cluster 2 cluster 1 contain only single data item cluster 2 also contain only single data item so the centroid and data item value both are same so suppose c1 is the cluster 1 c is the cluster 2 c is the cluster 1 c is the cluster 2 centroid of the cluster 1 is the 1 1 because there is a single data item centroid of the cluster 2 is a 2 1 because it, it, it is a single data item try to recall the flow chart i have selected randomly k number of cluster then i have calculated the centroid what was the third phase third phase was calculate the distance of all the data points to the centroid of the cluster that was the third step i am going to so that over there that is the data matrix the data represented by the matrix that is the uh, uh, four data point 1 2 3 4 these four are the data point that are already given to you these are the four data points i am talking about these four data points i am representing that data points as a matrix okay so these are the complete data set you have this is a complete data set you have now i have to calculate the distance between all these data point to the centroid one what is the meaning of that that is the first data point i have to calculate the euclidean distance between this data point to the centroid one again calculate the distance between second data point to the centroid one third data point to the centroid one the fourth data point to the centroid one it's very simple so that distance uh, output of that calculation already i have mentioned over there zero is the distance between this data point to the centroid one because these two are the same point distance between the second point to the uh, centroid one is the one distance between third point to the c1 is the 3.61 distance between the fourth point to the c1 is the distance 5 similarly i i have to repeat that process i have to calculate the distance of all the same data point to the centroid 2 because there is a two centroid so we have a two cluster similarly one is the distance between the first data point to the centroid 
distance between the second data point to the centroid two both are same that's why distance is zero distance between third data point to the centroid two is a 2.83 last distance is a 4.28 so the third step is already over where we have to calculate the distance between all the data point to the all the centroid we have okay so now i have to create a, a, a distance matrix i already over uh, the final distance matrix is over here uh, when uh, you your algorithm uh, you have to implement all the distance matrix you have to create so for r that helps you to find there is a concept of frame or data frame by using the data frame you can you that's a data structure you can use to store the data and the distance also so these are the distance with respect to the centroid one this is the distance uh, sorry this is the distance with respect to the centroid one this is the distance with respect to the centroid two i combine that distance and try to make the distance matrix so how can you understand that distance matrix the first row represent the distance of all the data point with respect to the centroid one the second row represent the distance from all the data point to the centroid two okay so that is a distance matrix after distance matrix i uh, i have to assign i have to uh, labeling it i have to label it so what is the meaning of label labeling over there try to understand so again i am uh, going to have a detailed discussion try to understand over there that is a data point 1 data one, point 1 one have a distance from the centroid one is a zero same data point have a distance to the centroid two is the one so 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 this is the this is the same data point and that represent the distance to the centroid one that represent the distance to the centroid two so you can easily understand that this data point is much much closer to the centroid one because the distance to the centroid one is less than the centroid a distance from the centroid two that's why it is a part of cluster one so that is called labeling matrix so the first uh, row represent the uh, group uh, cluster one the second row represent the cluster two similarly with respect to the data point 2 data point 2 is much closer to the centroid 2 so it should be a part of second cluster look in the binary way i have represented over there zero means it is an, it does not belong to the cluster and one means it belong to the cluster similarly third data point is much closer to the centroid 2 then it become a part of second uh, cluster similarly the fourth data point also close to the centroid two that's why it is a part of cluster so now we can uh, first iteration is over after that first first iteration the cluster one contain only single item set and cluster two contain the three item set so the cluster one only having a, a data point a cluster two having a data point b c and d agree now try to recall uh, uh, that uh, uh, row chart i have to again calculate the centroid okay so group 1 means cluster 1 has only one member so the centroid is 1 1 means no changes over there cluster 2 earlier it had only one data points now it has it has uh, three data points so now we have to again recalculate the centroid so centroid of the cluster 2 is that that is the average value with respect to the x coordinate average value with respect to the y coordinate that is a new centroid of the cluster 2 now that is a iterative process i have already explained the same thing i will go with a little bit faster so these are the distance matrix the first row represent all the data points having a distance from the c1 these are the again have to calculate the new distance because the centroid of the cluster 2 has been changed so now the new distance with respect to the 
new centroid so now this data point is closer to the cluster one that is that's why it is a part of cluster one this data points uh, uh, closer to the cluster one now earlier it that data point v was closer to the cluster b uh, cluster two now that data point b is closer to the cluster one so it will become a part of cluster one remaining two data items are closer to the cluster two centroid that's why it is it, it, it will become a member of cluster two. so after the second iteration you can understand that now cluster one having a two data items and cluster two also having a two data item earlier the point b was a part of cluster two but now it is shifted from the cluster to the cluster one so shifting happened shifting happened means we again have to calculate the centroid of both the cluster it is a iterative process the second iteration i'm talking so now it is the new center of the cluster one. Similarly, we have to calculate the new center of the cluster two. Same process. This represents the distance of all the data points from the new cluster, new centroid C1. Similarly, these are the distance of all the data points to the new centroid C2. And based on the distance, I have to label it. So these two data items are closer to the C1. That's why it's a part of cluster one. These two data items are closer to the C2. That's a part of cluster two. Now you can understand what were the cluster assignment you have observed in the earlier iteration, the same belonging means you have observed. Means data item stop, stop moving. So means whatever the observation you have understood over there, look over there that is the answer of the uh, after uh, the cluster you have received after second iteration the same assignment you have observed after the third iteration means what is the meaning of that it is also i have written in the note found no changes in the cluster data points are st stop moving this means the clustering process over this means that is converged stopping one of the stopping criteria matched what was the one of the stopping criteria when the movement of the data point is stopped we have to stop the cluster so these are the final cluster agree so uh, these are the two data point a b is the uh, a b in uh, cluster one and c d in the cluster two so if you try to recall yeah these are the a b these are the c d so C D is the part of second cluster, A B is the part of first cluster. Means through our understanding, whatever the answer we have, uh, we have we have imagined, the same answer is given by your clustering process. Okay, now uh, the most important discussion I'm going to start: how to choose the appropriate number of cluster. Like I have, I have promised you uh, you can start randomly with any value of the k there are some method that that will help you to find out the suitable value of the k so what are those method i'm going to discuss one of the best method to find the optimal value of the k is the elbow method so the procedure of the elbow method is written over here i will not go into the discussion i will explain through the example how it works so we have a two objective function you know any objective function you can consider either homogeneity or either heterogeneity in the both the case you will get the same answer so i'm going to explain by using the homogeneity to so try to focus on this 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 graph i am going to explain over there so y axis represent the homogeneity within within group homogeneity means homogeneity i'm talking about the intra cluster distance i'm talking and x axis represent the number of cluster number of cluster 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 like that so see over there suppose start with the minimum value of the k what is the possible minimum value of the k that is equal to true at least two group you required so suppose the k is equal to true k is equal to 2 you have executed your com algorithm completely whatever the cluster you got it Suppose the homogeneity is this one. 
this is the y axis represent the homogeneity now you change the k is equal to 3 again you need to execute full algorithm and after the conversion completely uh, execution process is over you have to again calculate the homogeneity you observe that with the k is equal to 3 homogeneity increased earlier homogeneity was here now the homogeneity increased so that is the thumb rule i am not uh, i will not going to the detail why it happened that is a phenomena that the moment you will increase the value of the k homogeneity will always increase i am repeating again there is a phenomenon that the moment you will increase the value of the k the homogeneity always increase why i am not going to discuss uh, for today discussion but try to remember that so what is happening over there that graph uh, uh, will not go down it will go up 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 it will not go down so the moment you are uh, uh, increasing the value of the k homogeneity also increases also increases also then we should, where where should we stop here the answer is that you have to see the sharp turn so that is the sharp turn means even though we are increasing the value of the k the homogeneity also increasing but then magnitude that amount of performance hike is very minute very very less so the moment <coughs> you can visualize that turning point that is called elbow elbow we have a, also our elbow is a turning point of our hand so similarly these are the hand this is the elbow so against that turning point you have to see the value of k suppose the value of k is equal to 3 means ideal value you should choose for that given data set will be k is equal to 3 i hope i have made it clear similarly another diagram you can explain over here you can understand over there the x axis represent the number of k y axis represent the uh, homogeneity and you can you can uh, you have to find out uh, uh, the elbow of that uh, graph so uh, intentionally i have pasted that graph over here that is a limitation of the elbow method is that sometime may happen you are not able to find out the turning point like this graph you cannot find out the the turning point somebody will say i should consider k is equal to 5 somebody will say k is equal to 6 so that is the limitation we have to work with that one of the question i got it is this value the max value of the k yeah the max for the hard uh, clustering the max value of the k is equal to the total number of data items suppose i have a 10 data items 10 number of observations so you cannot fix the k is equal to 11 you can fix the k is equal to up to 10 so you have to check the homogeneity with respect to the all the possible value of the k from k is equal to 2 to k is equal to 10 through that graph you have to observe where is the turning point suppose turning point like in that paragraph you observed that the turning point is with respect to the k is equal to 4 so k is equal to 4 is the optimal value of the cluster means if you set the k is equal to 4 whatever the cluster you will get that 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 cluster uh, will be optimal cluster so data points within those cluster will 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 share the similar property otherwise more number of cluster means more data items are more scattered so uh, optimal number of cluster i mean to say that is a condition where the homogeneity and heterogeneity will satisfy it as the ideal cases or the best result it will give another word you can say so that is uh, uh, enough and from my side for having a discussion about the k-means clustering so now i will go for having implementation by using r so meanwhile if someone have any question any doubt they can write on the chat box otherwise i am going to have a, a, a discussion on the implementation so any questions please write on the chat box Uh, if anybody wants to ask directly then they can raise their hands also I we know. can unmute you
Okay, no issue. So uh, now, uh, okay. So. Uh, Manish Thakkar is raising hand, sir. Uh, Please ask. Let me. Let me check, sir. I have to unmute him first. Then he will be able to ask. I have unmuted him, ma'am. Okay, sir. Manish. Manish. Manish Thakkar. Manish Thakkar. Manish Thakkar, you have to unmute yourself. We have unmuted you from here. You have to unmute from your side also. Then you will be able to speak. Okay, no issue. If he want, he can he can write. Uh, he can oh. write on the chat box. Chat box. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, so uh, let me know my our uh, editor or screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, um, I'm going to open one minute my data set. I will show you. Participants, you can zoom out also. Editor's screen is generally in small size only. It appears in sm small size because it's the terminal screen. So if you will zoom out your screen, then font size will get bigger. Okay. So uh, I think the first lecture is taken by uh, Mr. Amit, Amit Jain. So yes, sir. I hope he has uh, demonstrated uh, very initial command of the R, like uh, 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 like get WD, set WD, and basic the basic fundamental. I I hope he has uh, demonstrated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, I'm not going into the much detailed discussion like that. Uh, how to download the R Studio? How to install it? How to run it? Okay. Uh, no so, need. No need, sir. Sure. Sure. So first, let me explain what the data set I'm taking for uh, discussion. So the data set is, I have downloaded uh, uh, from the internet that is from uh, a freely available data set, a wholesale customer data set. Uh, you can search, you can also have a download. It is not a big issue. So that data set having a 10 character, uh, eight characteristics. Uh, the data set, uh, have a, please a look over there. This is the data set uh, that is a CSV file. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the eight features of the data set is given over there. Sometimes we call it features, sometimes we call it variables, sometimes we call it characteristics. So these are the common word normally we talk about. So I will consider the data set as an input. I will apply the key means clustering on that data set. I will try to develop the cluster. So here, a little bit have a more discussion about the data set. So here data set a uh, little bit, uh, let me explain. The phrase, phrase is the one of the variable or one of the characteristics of the data set that represent the annual spending, maybe in rupees you can consider, annual spending in rupees for purchasing the fresh product. So suppose I'm a Vivek Tiwari, I'm the customer of the big bazaar, how much item uh, uh, I normally purchase that comes under the fresh product or how much money I normally spend to purchasing the fresh product. So that is the data, that is the things it explain about. It is written continuous, continuous means it is a category of variable it is written over there. Continuous means it is a numerical variable. Similarly, the next feature milk is same as also annual spending maybe in rupees on the milk product. Grocery, Similarly, annual spending, similarly annual spending for the another item. So these are the some numerical variable. Last two variable channel and region try to understand. Channel means it talk about which category of particular person it. 
it is a retail customer individually he is purchasing or he is belongs to the particular hotel or restaurant so there is a two category of customer whether it is it is a retail customer or it is from the uh, uh, hotel or restaurant similarly reason reason is also one of the variable that will explain about the particular customer that belongs to the which region for the simplicity you may consider it as a suppose a bhopal so you belongs to the kolar or belongs to the new market or patel nagar like that so one okay yeah here uh, 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 some of the feature i have to drop it i have to remove the feature channel and the region from the data set if i consider if i if i feed that data set exactly same as that is given to me to the clustering algorithm the result whatever we will receive will not be the you cannot interpret that result or results are not acceptable why reason is that you can understand that first six of uh, variables are written over there these are the numerical values these are the continuous variables last two variables channel region are the categorical variables so uh, i hope many of you can understand what is the meaning of nominal categorical continuous numerical variable categorical variable means it belongs to the category like whether i am male or female whether uh, i am a resident of mp yes or no so these are the categorical variables whether i uh, my uh, reason of my belongingness means uh, like uh, you are from the new market you are from the kolar you are from the patel nagar so these are the category so you cannot feed category under the any distance matrix like suppose you are using the euclidean distance whatever the variable you are feeding the euclidean distance the, that variable must be a numerical variable you cannot calculate the distance between male and female you cannot calculate the distance between south indian and north indian like that so similarly these two variables seven or eight are the categorical variable it is already mentioned over there nominal nominal means categorical variable so that is the one of the fundamental guideline everybody should follow whatever the data set is given to you you try to export that data set if all those variables that are the categorical variable remove from the uh, data set all those categorical variable and remaining variable must be a numerical variable try to feed that uh, data set to the clustering matter so uh, first i will try to uh, load the data so uh, there is a command read.csv read.csv is a very simple command if data set in the csv file and that is a data set name whole customer dot data dot csv look that is the csv file i have to pass that name into that function and function will do everything for you so suppose i have a copy uh, that command and my there is a r editor i think it is visible to you if, if my editor is not uh, visible to anybody please let me know so so i have just run that command it is taking too much time i don't know okay bye so that is the read dot csv the function i have used okay i am audible so now yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. yes sir yes sir screen is also visible okay thank you so the data is a variable you can give uh, the variable name as per your uh, easiness like a b c x y z so this is the variable i have created the read function i have taken there is a whole data set were in the csv file in my hard disk i have uploaded that data and read dot csd command I import that data and store into the data so now i i have to work in only the data data is a variable full data whatever the data i have shown to you in the csv file now it is stored into a single variable data you can see it. look whatever the data was there it is here complete data set the channel and region i have to remove okay so that is the complete data set the variable name i have uh, 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 right over there and click it will show all the uh, data set that are already stored in the database okay so 
so go to the next uh, okay so it is written we will uh, we'll need to drop the challenge or reason variable because these two are the categorical variable or id variable so what is the command to drop it so okay let me explain over here so uh, uh, what what i am doing over here i am creating a new variable data one there were already a data that is a variable that contain all the complete data set in that syntax i have to command to index value first index value is empty empty means complete first index value represent the total number of ray rows after comma second index value represent the total number of column so if i kept empty the row index value means complete row i am taking complete row i am considering and against the uh, uh, column index value minus 1 or 2 in r the index value start from 1 not from 0 so what is the meaning of that minus means what it is you can understand that in real data set the column there are eight column column number 1 and 2 with minus value it is going to drop these two column so minus column index 1 column index 2 means it is not going to consider these two column okay and uh, it is going to consider all the rows that's why i kept empty at the uh, 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 row index so the moment you will run that command it will filter that data based on your requirement it is going to drop it is it is going to drop these two column now data 1 you can you can see whether you are getting the desired results or not you can see you can see uh, uh, now fresh milk grocery frozen detergent and other like that the channel and 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 what was the uh, uh, another column it it is removed it is gone that was the channel and region channel was at the first uh, index region was at the second index these two are removed now uh, uh, data one is the data one is a variable that is really contain real data set where i so now i have to apply the kmis clustering algorithm so like a python or r or or matlab that are the best tool for implementing any uh, machine learning algorithms and all the packages all the functions are already uh, pre written pre built and you can directly use uh, for your purpose so the k means the function in the r already there like a header file in the c++ you don't need to implement the k means clustering from the scratch however you want to see the complete code you can go to the help and type the k means under the k means how the complete algorithm whatever i have explained in the last one hour it is implemented there the clodian functions through through uh, distance matrix through data frame everything is there to stropping criteria everything is defined over there under the k means function so i am not going to implement the algorithm from the scratch algorithm already implemented i am going to use the function So that is a function i have to pass only two variable you want to apply the k means clustering on which data set i want to apply on the data one data one is the data set i have how many cluster you want five so k is equal to five so like i have explained in the k means clustering algorithm you have user have to give the value of k so i hope it is clear to everybody i am going to run that command okay it is over within a one line full complete k means clustering algorithm is over it is uh, 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 iteration is over multiple iteration is over multiple time uh, 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 assignment updation process is over euclidean distance has been completely uh, uh, calculated and 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 what happened stopping criteria they have matched many time and algorithm already converged and cluster is already created so within a second one function have done everything for you 
Now go to the detail. I want to discuss more. I want to see the cluster property. So the clustering is created. What are the cluster? I want to see the property. Okay. So please try to focus over there. Uh, uh, a little bit important thing I will discuss. You see the clustering process. Whatever I have done, in the clustering process it has created five cluster. This is the cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, cluster four, cluster five. Now under the cluster one. <clears throat> uh, how can I explain you? Take the example of the milk. Take the example of the milk. There is a cluster number five. Cluster number five are the cluster that contain the set of peoples, a set of customer that normally spend thirty-eight thousand rupees. For purchasing the milk annually, what I am trying to explain you, clustering only create the cluster. After that, what are the pattern over there? What are the trend over there? You have to dive into the detail. The clustering process cannot give the sentence like these are the pattern, these are the trend uh, hidden over there. Domain knowledge required. we have to analyze each and every cluster and try to find out the pattern like like right now i am doing what i am doing i am seeing against the milk these are the annual spending of the people so i get it no 38000 rupees annually people are spending who belong to the cluster 5 and the cluster 1 are those only those people that 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 spend only 3000 rupees per year for purchasing the milk or milk related product so you can think over there suppose you have a new milk product what you will do whom you will can contact if you have a new milk product definitely you will go all the customers that belong to the cluster 5 because these are the people that are really spend a lot of money on the milk or milk related product But these are the people; they are very less spend on the milk. You see the holistic way. You see the holistic way. These are the cluster one, except the fresh grocery, against milk, against grocery, against frozen item. These cluster are poorly performed. Means you can imagine that, you can think like that. Maybe I am wrong. Uh, the cluster one contain the peoples that are uh, that belongs to the poorly economical background they are poor peoples economically background they belongs to the uh, little bit uh, poor poor background uh, poor economical uh, economic background they belongs to that that's why they are spending less in grocery purchase milk purchase and frozen item purchase similarly the peoples are belongs to the Cluster five are rich one. They are spending a lot on purchases of milk, grocery, and so on. Another way you can also think that another way you can also think that uh, uh, these uh, are may be possible. Uh, the cluster five contain mostly persons that belongs to the uh, restaurant and hotels. So so they are they they used to purchase milk and grocery other items in the huge amount. So in that way. in that way you can analyze the clustering results one minute any questions editor is not visible somebody is saying my my our editor is visible to everybody Uh, yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, because somebody have written for that one, it is not visible. Okay, let let it go. Somebody, uh, so a question of Kesav Sharma from YouTube. YouTube, what is the p value? Okay, so I am very surprised to see uh, in today in my discussion where the p value I have discussed. P value, I think I didn't discuss about the p value. okay so okay youtube uh, from somebody have asked okay let me explain the p value is something that is more related to the linear regression or some statistical analysis where p value is talk about 
uh, a significance level of the something. Uh, like uh, uh, normally p value range, uh, no, p value any parameter, any parameter, any features that gives a p value less than 5% or 0 0.05, we normally consider as an important feature. So uh, p value is talk about it, it help us to identify against any result, any feature, whether it is significant or not. Significant means I mean to I mean to over here. Suppose I will say uh, I want to predict whether uh, a student is going to place or going to have a success in uh, coming placement drive or not. The student is in uh, second year. I want to predict he is going to uh, going to be placed or not. So for uh, predicting such kind of things, I need to uh, I need required some internal feature like uh, the performance of 10th and 12th CGPA. First year CGPA, second year CGPA of particular student, his technical skill is how many projects he has gone through, how many languages he know, so many features I, 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 I want to know. Suppose now I'm going to ask a question, whether a roll number of particular student is going to decide the student is going to be success in placement drive or not. Try to understand my question. Whether roll number of particular student, particular student is important to decide that a student is going to success in coming placement drive or not. Not at all. But if I say the communication skill is how important to decide whether a student is going to success in placement or not. So somebody will agree the technical skill is technical skill or communication skill uh, is an important feature. It is a significant feature that is a really influence the success. But my role number my role number does not does not. Uh, important feature. So how do you know all those things? If you have a background knowledge, you do know. But if you don't have a background knowledge, then p-value comes into the picture. Uh, against each and every variable, we have to calculate the p-value. And based on the p-value, we can decide the given uh, uh, feature is important or not. If the feature's p-value is less than 5%, it is important. If feature's value is greater than 5%, it is not important. It would be bit, uh, better if if we could under uh, we, we could discuss about the p value with respect to the uh, linear regression. So in the clustering process, uh, I think I didn't discuss about the p value. That's why I think it is enough uh, for today discussion. Okay, uh, now for uh, next uh, I have to go over here. Uh, okay, so now if somebody want to see the how many items uh, each cluster uh, each cluster contain. So I have a command that it is visible to everybody. This is the table. Table is already a command. So K, K is the uh, output uh, of the clustering process I have stored in the variable K. So K dollar, the cluster is a command. The moment you will fire that command, it will going to show how many observations belong to the each cluster like that. Cluster one contain 106 observations or 106 customers, you can say. Cluster two contain 233 customers. Cluster three contain 81 observation. Cluster four and cluster one like that. So in this way, that command you can visualize all those. Next, uh, 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 we had discussed a lot about the homogeneity and heterogeneity. Homogeneity means the intra-cluster distance, and heterogeneity means intra-cluster. So how to uh, uh, measure the homogeneity and heterogeneity? So there is a keyword within SSE. Within SSE represent the homogeneity. And between SSE represent the heterogeneity. So first I am going to measure and display the within SSE. So that is the things I'm going to explain over there to see the result. That is a within SSE of the cluster one, within SSE of the cluster two, cluster three, cluster four, cluster five. That within SSE means, suppose the cluster one have 106 point, 106 observations. So that is the Euclidean distance, the sum of the Euclidean distance between all the data points of the cluster one. Means data point one, suppose there is a 106 data points. So data point one, I have to calculate the distance from remaining 105 data items. 
similarly for the second data item i have to calculate the distance from other 105 data items then i have to sum it that is called within ssc within ssc of the cluster 1 cluster 2 cluster 3 cluster 4 and cluster 5 <coughs> similarly i need to see uh, 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 the heterogeneity or that is called between ssc that is a single value so I, i we had a five cluster five cluster so what is the distance between all these five cluster we are going to represent by using the between ssc so here what need to do each cluster have a centroid then we have a five centroid then we have to calculate the distance between these five centroid and that is the summation of those it is called uh, homo uh, heterogeneity we try to maximize it now um, okay so elbow method how to implement the elbow method i am going to discuss about, i already discuss about the elbow method so let me explain the code uh, i i will not go into the detail so uh, in the elbow method i have to run my algorithm with all the possible value of the k for the simplicity here i am running my algorithm for k is equal to 2 to k is equal to 20 means x axis i will start my x, x, x axis from the k is equal to 2 i will execute my clustering algorithm i will calculate the homogeneity i will store some error then the k is equal to 2 then k is equal to 3 then k is equal to 4 then k is equal to 5 similarly these are the variable where i am going to store the average ssc sorry average homogeneity with respect to each and every value of the k so size of that variable should be equal to the size of uh, total uh, different different value of the k i am going to consider so that's why the range range is 19 if you consider the variable the length of uh, range variable it would be 19 so the vector i am going to create over here the size of exactly all the uh, with respect to the possible value of the k so that is a, a command i have to okay run it then see whether it is going to create elbow method for me or not for for, for this given data set uh, and and price means h with respect to every k value i am running my algorithm 100 time because in each and every time my algorithm may give different different results so i i'm going to summarize i'm going to summarize the more general performance of the my algorithms that's why i have to run algorithm 100 time so okay that is the code it will do everything for you whatever i have explained over there look the variable v it will execute from 0 uh, v from 2 to 20 and 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 against each value of v it will execute algorithm 100 time and after 100 time you you will have a 100 homogeneity and 100 homogeneity then I, we have to uh, uh, we have to uh, store the average uh, ssc with respect to the each k value in this variable then again we have to calculate that variable So suppose that uh, code uh, in very fast way I have explained that don't worry about that it is executing 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 execution over then I want to visualize that data what is the uh, for understanding the code little bit you have to dive into the syntax of R look right hand side here these are the elbow method look. k is equal to 2 to k is equal to 20 x axis y axis is the total within ssc and you can consider the homogeneity maybe somebody will say k is equal to 6 k is equal to 7 that is open to up to you there is no another way to decide the exact value of the k is equal to 5 k is equal to 6 k is equal to 7 so based on the your understanding where you visualize the turning point you can consider the k is equal to ideal value it may be 6 or 7 like that for my understanding so this is the way you can execute uh, uh, the elbow method to decide the optimal value another things i will also try to explain over there suppose i want to visualize uh, 
so there is a, uh, a two library you can use the cluster is the library already i have run over there and another library is the fpc these two library you have to install on your system and you have to include in your uh, r once you have successfully included these two library you can visualize the clustering results so plot cluster is a function that is already explained in the fpc package if that package is a part of your r environment you can directly run that package so i am going to run that package and see what happens the function okay so the plot cluster is a function data is a data set i have used the data one you can also do and the k uh, uh, that is the uh, result of the clustering process you have stored so you execute you uh, try to execute it and see the results you see the cluster visualization over here yeah this is the visualization so these are the data points of the cluster 5 very very few data points comes in the cluster 5 uh, these are lighter colored <laughs> green color data points are the cluster 3 red colors <coughs> are the cluster 2 black color data points are the cluster 1 and uh, blue color are the part of cluster 4 so in this way you can also visualize the your 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 data so um, okay so that is uh, enough from my side okay so oh, i i know a little bit faster way quick quickly i have i have wind up uh, the implementation part because it is normally based on the syntax so if you are comfortable syntax with respect to the r or python whatever you want all the implementation are available on the google you can you can explore uh, based on the your choice so from my side it is over so now i'm going to open the discussion session so you can unmute yourself and ask the questions or doubt anything you want to have in the session please participants if you want to ask any questions then drop your questions in the chat box or raise your hand any questions from participants please drop your questions in the chat box okay no issue ma'am you can share my mail id if uh, later they can have a some uh, confusion and any doubt they can write to me directly so not a issue okay sir chandan sir am i audible to you yes yes am i audible yes sir yes sir continue thank you sir i thank you so much sir for this informative and great session which enhanced our knowledge about descriptive data analytics through clustering using r using r i hope that all participants are now able to do the implementation of r in the above field i am extremely privileged to have you all here today sir furthermore i appreciate your valuable time and patience you have shown today again behalf of our twelve family i am thanking you so much sir for being with us feedback link is yes sir thank you thank you thank you for my side you have considered me contacted me and given this opportunity to have a discussion with uh, with with uh, other other participants and after many years i think and i am just seeing uh, sonal madam because we worked earlier together in <laughs> bansal group so okay. yeah, after many years i am seeing her okay it was a really nice experience a nice discussion thank you sir thank you <laughs> thank you sir Uh, dear participants, uh, feedback link is shared in the chat box and on YouTube channel too. And I have also mailed the complete information of day one of session one and two for to all participants. Thank you, thank you all. Thank okay, you, ma'am. Okay, may I leave now? Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. Thank okay. you so much, sir, for your precious time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, Irfan, sir, we uh, do not close the meeting. I have to put the सर वी कैन शेयर फीडबैक लिंक इन द चैट बॉक्स आल्सो ना ओ सॉरी इन अवर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप आल्सो हां हां 
so participants you will get uh, uh, feedback link in the whatsapp okay from there you can get the link and you have to fill that feedback form too and tomorrow we will continue at uh, 10 am sharp for third session so tagi sir should we end it yeah. okay sir thank you and thanks to one and all present here you can leave now thank you uh, some students are not in whatsapp group uh, sir could you share that whatsapp link in uh, our this uh, zoom uh i am trying ma'am those who are still not joined in whatsapp group then wait for a moment so i will share the link in this chat box only whatsapp group link is already shared uh, already sent to the mail on the on their mail mail id kindly refer to your mail you will get the whatsapp link with there i have mailed all the uh, information regarding day one sessions to all the participants kindly check your email you will get all the things thank you thank you ma'am yeah thank you sir and i am uh, able to see that feedback link is also shared in the chat box right now i have also mailed uh, to all the participants okay sir okay thank you sir thank you